Thank you for joining me for today's market update. As an overview, the market did a great job last week just shrugging off important news. Nothing mattered. Now, the market didn't make much progress, but technicals remain bullish. Longer term, popular investment strategies that worked, let's say, over the past 30 years, for example, are really unlikely to work in the future. This has a significant impact on what you should be doing right now, even though it's longer term. We'll get to that, but this needs to impact how we as investors are thinking right now. Over the past week, prices consolidated. We see here a little bit of volatility. That was the Fed meeting. So the Federal Reserve met. Headline, no change. However, in the implementation note, they did change the reserve, the interest rate they're paying on reserves and they lowered it by five basis points. It is trivial, but it shows that the next move is more likely to be down than up. So little notice story in the implementation note, actually maybe a bigger story than most analysts are realizing right now. So we had that and then Chairman Powell had a press conference. He's not very good at those. So we had that little bit of downside volatility. Unemployment came out. Headline looks good. We created a lot of jobs, but we had a large decline in the population and the number of people in the workforce. That's what pushed unemployment rate lower. There are actually fewer people employed this month than a month ago. So troubling signs building. Right now the market says ignore them, so we're gonna follow the price action. Breath, also supportive of higher prices. Consolidated in the past week, almost unchanged. The percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average, hanging in there near 70% percentage of stocks above the 50-day moving average actually improved a little bit in the last week. So that's bullish. Nothing in the price action scaring us away. The NASDAQ 100, little bit of volatility ending the week virtually unchanged, but kind of exciting ride to get there. IPOs continue to show strength. Money not coming out of the NASDAQ 100 yet. Investors are Institutional investors seem to be waiting this one out. NASDAQ 100 breadth, again showing the same trend as the other breadth measures we looked at, virtually unchanged. Looking ahead, the short-term outlook does remain bullish based on the technicals, but the long-term outlook is more bearish than I realized. I read an interesting paper this week, how the wealth was won, and there's a link so that you could uh, read it yourself if you choose to. I'll save you the math and give you the bottom line here in the next two slides, but the our authors looked at where returns came from. And what they noted is that there were tremendous returns from 89 to 2017. They were much larger than the returns that had come from 1959 to 1988. My first concern when reading a paper like this is why did they pick 1959 and 2017 as their start and stop points? They're using economic data and the, the data smoothing techniques that they used required these dates to be used. So no data mining here. This is a valid, excellent piece of work. It showed that in the earlier period, stock market returns came from economic growth. And that's what we've been led to believe is a primary factor in stock market returns. In the second period, the majority of the returns came from what the authors are calling a reallocation of rents to shareholders in a decelerating economy. Now, what that means is companies bring money in and they reallocated it to the shareholders through dividends and share buybacks, taking a share away from labor and productive factors. So rent seeking is an economic term that indicates money is going towards those who are 
trying to capture gains from the work of others, in effect, and that's what accounted for the gains. So I made some charts based on the tape on the paper because it was a little bit mathematically intensive and kind of confusing at times. So here's the earlier period, stock market returns matching the economic value added. In the later period, stock market returns significantly greater than the economic value. So for the earlier period, 92% of the stock market returns came from economic growth. In the later period, just a quarter, the majority of returns coming from profits reallocated to shareholders away from labor. Now, I'm not getting into the politics of inequality here. What I want to do is just say, let's look ahead at the next 30 years. Is it likely that corporations can continue to boost what they allocate to shareholders? And the answer is no. We saw last week profit margins are decreasing. That's a significant factor because the increase in profit margins allowed for this factor. Interest rates. Interest rates were rising in the earlier period, so they detracted from stock market returns. As interest rates fell, they increased market returns, and interest rates are now at 5,000-year lows. So this factor is unlikely to be reproduced. Change in the risk premium. In other words, did the P-E ratio go up or down? Now, the 1959 to 1988 period, these are investors who lived through or had immediate family who lived through the Great Depression. They had a risk aversion. That risk aversion gradually went away, and in the period there was some increase in the valuation of the stock market as the investors were willing to take on more risk. That became a more significant factor in the latter period. Now looking ahead the next 30 years, can we really get higher valuations in the stock market? We're at historic highs again. So unlikely we're gonna see risk premium increasing returns going forward. Finally, economic growth did contribute a part of returns, was the major factor before. So now the stock market that we've become used to is really not driven by economics anymore, which is a good thing because economic growth is slow. Unfortunately, going forward as these other factors dissipate, we're going to depend on economic growth, and it's just not going to be there in a large enough amount to deliver the kind of returns investors enjoyed over the past 30 years. Turning to earnings now. Earnings reports so far, we have more than three quarters of companies reporting. Beats look good, uh, coming in in line um, with averages on earnings per share. Revenue, again, coming in in line with long-term averages. Sales just 0.3% above expectations. Companies are not able to increase their sales dramatically is what this is telling us. Traders are selling bad news. We're seeing larger than average losses on misses. So what we have now is revenue remains the primary concern. The small size of beats indicates companies aren't raising prices. So the reason they're not raising prices is probably a concern that they'll lose sales. Um, Warren Buffett alluded to that this weekend when he said basically Heinz and Kraft no longer command the premiums they did because customers are getting good enough products from store brands and competitors. So that's another long-term factor to keep in mind. And then traders continually to sell bad news this is going to narrow the market to just a few sectors, and this is the process that played out in 1999 and 2000, and we know that one ended badly. My market opinion, price action remains bullish. Earnings season winding down, we're going to start to shift to news, and I think political news is going to crowd out economic news for at least the next few weeks. Longer term, that study really has us looking at what the source of returns are going to be in the future. And the source of returns in the future are not going to be large enough to deliver the long-term average returns that we've enjoyed in the past. You're not going to sit, 30 years from now, we're not going to sit here and say 
the stock market has delivered annual returns of 7 to 10% a year. It's probably going to be half that. That means the best strategy is going to be a short-term strategy where we move in and out of different positions or a sector-focused approach to benefit from that narrowing of the market. We're prepared for that. We are ready for the long term, as daunting as it appears to be, and I'll continue to monitor all of these trends. Thanks for joining me.